welcome to official DVSA, Driving Theory Test, Updated UK. Question. You want to turn right from a junction. What should you do if your view is restricted by parked vehicles, give one answer. A. Move out quickly, but be prepared to stop. B. Sound your horn and pull out if there's no reply. C. Stop, get out and look along the main road to check. D. Stop, then move forward slowly until you have a clear view. The correct answer is D. Stop, then move forward slowly until you have a clear view. Explanation, if you want to turn right from a junction and your view is restricted, stop. Ease forward until you can see, something might be approaching. If you don't know, don't go. Question. You're at an incident. What could you do to help an unconscious casualty, give one answer. A. Check that they're breathing normally. B. Move them to somewhere more comfortable. C. Splash their face with cool water. D. Take photographs of the scene. The correct answer is A. Check that they're breathing normally. Explanation. If a casualty is unconscious, you need to check that they're breathing normally. Look for chest movements, look and listen for breathing, and feel for breath on your cheek. Question. Why should you reduce your speed here? Give one answer. A. A low bridge is ahead. B. A stagger junction is ahead. C. The road narrows ahead. D. The road surface changes ahead. The correct answer is B. A stagger junction is ahead. Explanation. Traffic could be turning off or pulling out ahead of you, to the left or right. Vehicles turning left will be slowing down before the junction, and any vehicles turning right may have to stop to allow oncoming traffic to clear. Be prepared for this, as you might have to slow down or stop behind them. Question. A single carriageway road has this sign. What's the maximum permitted speed for a car towing a trailer? Give one answer. A. 30 miles per hour. B. 40 miles per hour. C. 50 miles per hour. D. 60 miles per hour. The correct answer is C. 50 miles per hour. Explanation. When you're towing a trailer, a reduced speed limit also applies on dual carriageways and motorways. These lower speed limits apply to vehicles pulling all sorts of trailers, including caravans and horse boxes. Question. You're behind this cyclist. When the traffic lights change, what should you do? Give one answer. A. Allow the cyclist time and room. B. Tap your horn and drive through first. C. Try to move off before the cyclist. D. Turn right but give the cyclist room. The correct answer is A. Allow the cyclist time and room. Explanation. Hold back and allow the cyclist to move off. Some junctions have special areas marked across the front of the traffic lane. These allow cyclists to wait for the lights to change and move off ahead of other traffic. Question. Which road users are most difficult to see when you're reversing your car? Give one answer. A. Car drivers. B. Children. C. Cyclists. D. Motorcyclists. The correct answer is B. Children. Explanation. It may not be possible to see a small child through the rear windscreen of your vehicle. Be aware of this before you reverse. If there are children about, get out and check that it's clear before reversing. Question. 
you arrive at an incident. There's no danger from fire or further collisions, and the emergency services have been called. What's your first priority when attending to an unconscious motorcyclist? Give one answer. A. Check whether they have any broken bones. B. Check whether they have any bruising. C. Check whether they're bleeding. D. Check whether they're breathing normally. The correct answer is D. Check whether they're breathing normally. Explanation. At the scene of an incident, always be aware of danger from further collisions or fire. The first priority when dealing with an unconscious person is to ensure they can breathe. This may involve clearing their airway if you can see an obstruction or if they're having difficulty breathing. Question. You're driving with your front fog light switched on. What should you do if the fog has cleared? Give one answer. A. Drive with them on instead of your headlights. B. Flash them to warn oncoming traffic that it's foggy. C. Leave them on if other drivers have their lights on. D. Switch them off as long as visibility remains good. The correct answer is D. Switch them off as long as visibility remains good. Explanation. Switch off your fog lights if the weather improves, but be prepared to use them again if visibility reduces to less than 100 meters or 328 feet. Question. You're driving along a wet road. How can you tell if your vehicle's tires are losing their grip on the surface? Give one answer. A. The engine noise will increase. B. The engine will stall. C. The steering will feel very heavy. D. The steering will feel very light. The correct answer is D. The steering will feel very light. Explanation. If you drive at speed in very wet conditions, your steering may suddenly feel lighter than usual. This means that the tires have lifted off the surface of the road and are floating on the surface of the water. This is known as aquaplaning. Reduce speed but don't brake until your steering returns to normal. Question. What must you do if your ability to drive is impaired during a period of illness? Give one answer. A. See your doctor each time before you drive. B. Stop driving until you're fit to drive again. C. Take all your medicines with you when you drive. D. Take smaller doses of any medicines. The correct answer is B. Stop driving until you're fit to drive again. Explanation. Only drive if you're fit to do so. Driving when you're ill or taking some medicines can affect your concentration and judgment. It may also cause you to become drowsy or even fall asleep. Question. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Bus is turning. B. Keep right. C. Many roundabout. D. Ring road. The correct answer is C. Many roundabout. Explanation. When you see this sign, look out for any direction signs and judge whether you need to signal your intentions. Do this in good time so that other road users approaching the roundabout know what you're planning to do. Question. You're turning right at a crossroads. An oncoming driver is also turning right. What's the advantage of turning behind the oncoming vehicle? Give one answer. A. You'll be able to turn without stopping. B. You'll have a clearer view of any approaching traffic. C. You'll have more time to turn. D. You'll use less fuel because you can stay in a higher gear. The correct answer is B. You'll have a clearer view of any approaching traffic. Explanation. 
when turning right at a crossroads where oncoming traffic is also turning right, it's generally safer to turn behind the approaching vehicle. This allows you a clear view of approaching traffic and is called turning offside to offside. However, some junctions, usually controlled by traffic light filters, are marked for vehicles to turn near side to near side. Question. You're in the right-hand lane of a three-lane motorway. What do these overhead signs mean? Give one answer. A. Leave the motorway at the next exit. B. Move to the left and reduce your speed to 50 miles per hour. C. There are roadworks 50 meters, 55 yards ahead. D. Use the hard shoulder until you've passed the hazard. The correct answer is B. Move to the left and reduce your speed to 50 miles per hour. Explanation. You must obey these signs even if there appear to be no problems ahead. There could be queuing traffic or another hazard that you can't see yet. Question. Which sign means that the national speed limit applies? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is B. Explanation. You should know the speed limit for the road on which you're traveling, and the vehicle that you're driving. The different speed limits are shown in the highway code. Question. You're driving on a motorway at night. Which lights should you have on if there are other vehicles just ahead of you? Give one answer. A. Dipped headlights. B. Front fog lights. C. Main beam headlights. D. Side lights only. The correct answer is A. Dipped headlights. Explanation. If you're driving behind other traffic on the motorway at night, use dipped headlights. Main beam headlights will dazzle the other drivers. Your headlights dipped beam should fall short of the vehicle in front. Question. What does a red traffic light mean? Give one answer. A. Proceed with care. B. Stop if you're able to brake safely. C. You must stop and wait behind the stop line. D. You should stop unless turning left. The correct answer is C. You must stop and wait behind the stop line. Explanation. Whatever light is showing, you should know which light is going to appear next and be able to take appropriate action. For example, when amber is showing on its own, you'll know that red will appear next. This should give you ample time to anticipate and respond safely. Question, which vehicle will use a blue flashing beacon? Give one answer. A. Bomb disposal. B. Breakdown recovery. C. Motorway maintenance. D. Snow plow. The correct answer is A. Bomb disposal. Explanation. Emergency vehicles use blue flashing lights. If you see or hear one, move out of its way as soon as it's safe and legal to do so. Question. What must you do if your eyesight has become very poor and you're no longer able to meet the driver's eyesight requirements? Give one answer. A. Tell the driver licensing authority. B. Tell the police. C. Tell your doctor. D. Tell your optician. The correct answer is A. Tell the driver licensing authority. Explanation. Having very poor eyesight will have a serious effect on your ability to drive safely. If you can't meet the driver's eyesight requirements, you must tell DVLA, or DVA in Northern Ireland. Question. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Be aware of trains. B. 
be aware of trams. C. Level crossing. D. Tourist attraction. The correct answer is D. Tourist attraction. Explanation. These signs indicate places of interest, and are designed to guide you by the easiest route. They're particularly useful when you're unfamiliar with the area. Question. You're waiting at a level crossing. What should you do if the red warning lights continue to flash after a train has passed by? Give one answer. A. Continue to wait. B. Drive across carefully. C. Get out and investigate. D. Telephone the signal operator. The correct answer is A. Continue to wait. Explanation. At a level crossing, flashing red lights mean you must stop. If the train passes but the lights keep flashing, wait. Another train may be coming. Question. You're driving on the motorway. Which lane should you get into well before you reach your exit? Give one answer. A. The hard shoulder. B. The left hand lane. C. The middle lane. D. The right hand lane. The correct answer is B. The left hand lane. Explanation. You'll see the first advance direction sign one mile from a motorway exit. If you're traveling at 60 miles per hour in the right hand lane, you'll only have about 50 seconds before you reach the countdown markers. There'll be another sign at the half mile point. Don't cut across lanes of traffic at the last moment, move to the left hand lane in good time. Question. You're leaving your vehicle parked on a road and unattended. When may you leave the engine running? Give one answer. A. If the battery keeps going flat. B. If you'll be parking for less than 5 minutes. C. Never if you're away from the vehicle. D. When parked in a 20 miles per hour zone. The correct answer is C. Never if you're away from the vehicle. Explanation. When you leave your vehicle parked on a road, switch off the engine and secure the vehicle. Make sure no valuables are visible, shut all the windows, lock the vehicle, and set the alarm if the vehicle has one. Question. Which sign shows that you're entering a one-way system? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is B. Explanation. If the road has two lanes, you can use either lane and overtake on either side. Use the lane that's more convenient for your destination unless signs or road markings indicate otherwise. Question. Which driving technique can help you save fuel? Give one answer. A. Accelerating sharply in each gear. B. Missing out some gears. C. Using each gear in turn. D. Using lower gears as often as possible. The correct answer is B. Missing out some gears. Explanation. Missing out intermediate gears, when appropriate, helps to reduce the amount of time spent accelerating and decelerating, the times when your vehicle uses the most fuel. Question. At a puffin crossing, which color follows the green signal? Give one answer. A. Flashing amber. B. Flashing green. C. Steady amber. D. Steady red. The correct answer is C. Steady amber. Explanation, puffin crossings have infrared sensors that detect when pedestrians are crossing and hold the red traffic signal until the crossing is clear. The use of a sensor means there's no flashing amber phase as there is with a pelican crossing. Question. 
on a road where trams operate, which of these vehicles will be most at risk from the tram rails? Give one answer. A. Buses. B. Cars. C. Cycles. D. Lorries. The correct answer is C. Cycles. Explanation. The narrow wheels of a bicycle can become stuck in the tram rails, causing the cyclist to stop suddenly, wobble or even lose balance altogether. The tram lines are also slippery, which could cause a cyclist to slide or fall off. Question. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Clearway, no stopping. B. National speed limit applies. C. Waiting permitted. D. Waiting restrictions apply. The correct answer is D. Waiting restrictions apply. Explanation. There'll be a plate or additional sign to tell you when the restrictions apply. Question. You're waiting in a traffic queue at night. How can you avoid dazzling drivers behind you? Give one answer. A. Balance the clutch with the accelerator. B. Keep your foot on the foot brake. C. Use the parking brake and foot brake together. D. Use the parking brake and release the foot brake. The correct answer is D. Use the parking brake and release the foot brake. Explanation. In queuing traffic, your brake lights can dazzle drivers behind you. If you apply your parking brake, you can take your foot off the foot brake. This will turn off the brake lights so that they can't dazzle the driver behind you. Question. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Quayside or river bank. B. Road liable to flooding. C. Steep hill downwards. D. Uneven road surface. The correct answer is A. Quayside or river bank. Explanation. You should be careful in these locations, as the road surface is likely to be wet and slippery. There may be a steep drop to the water, and there may not be a barrier along the edge of the road. Question. What should you do if you start to feel drowsy while you're driving on a motorway? Give one answer. A. Open a window and stop as soon as it's safe and legal. B. Slow down and let other drivers overtake. C. Speed up to arrive at your destination sooner. D. Stop on the hard shoulder for a sleep. The correct answer is A. Open a window and stop as soon as it's safe and legal. Explanation. Never stop on the hard shoulder to rest. If there's no service area for several miles, leave the motorway at the next exit and find somewhere safe and legal to pull over. Question. What does it mean if the signs at a bus lane show no times of operation? Give one answer. A. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. B. The lane is only in operation at peak times. C. The lane is only in operation in daylight hours. D. The lane isn't in operation. The correct answer is A. The lane is in operation 24 hours a day. Explanation. Bus lane signs show the vehicles allowed to use the lane and its times of operation. Where no times are shown, the bus lane is in operation 24 hours a day. Question. How should you signal if you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? Give one answer. A. Signal left after you leave the roundabout and enter the new road. B. Signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you're going to take. C. Signal right on the approach and then left to leave the roundabout. D. 
signal right on the approach to the roundabout and keep the signal on. The correct answer is B, signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you're going to take. Explanation, to go straight ahead at a roundabout, you should normally approach in the left-hand lane, but check the road markings. At some roundabouts, the left lane on approach is marked left turn only, so make sure you use the correct lane to go ahead. You won't normally need to signal as you approach, but signal before you leave the roundabout, as other road users need to know your intentions. Question. What's the minimum time gap you should leave when following a vehicle on a wet road? Give one answer. A. 4 seconds B 1 second C 3 seconds D 2 seconds The correct answer is A 4 seconds Explanation Water will reduce your tire's grip on the road. The safe separation gap of at least 2 seconds in dry conditions should be doubled, to at least 4 seconds, in wet weather. Question. What should you do when you're overtaking a horse and rider? Give one answer. A. Flash your headlights as a warning. B. Go past as quickly as possible. C. Go past slowly and carefully. D. Sound your horn as a warning. The correct answer is C. Go past slowly and carefully. Explanation. Horses can be startled by the sound of a car engine or the rush of air caused by a vehicle passing too closely. Keep well back and only pass when it's safe. Leave them plenty of room, you may have to use the other side of the road to go past safely. Question. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Give way to farm vehicles. B. Give way to trams. C. Wait at the barriers. D. Wait at the crossroads. The correct answer is B. Give way to trams. Explanation. Obey the give way signs. Trams are unable to steer around you if you misjudge when it's safe to enter the junction. Question. You're about to reverse into a side road. What should you do if a pedestrian is waiting to cross behind your car? Give one answer. A. Give way to the pedestrian. B. Reverse before the pedestrian starts to cross. C. Sound your horn to warn the pedestrian. D. Wave to the pedestrian to stop. The correct answer is A. Give way to the pedestrian. Explanation, if you need to reverse into a side road, try to find a place that's free from traffic and pedestrians. Look all around before and during the maneuver. Stop and give way to any pedestrians who want to cross behind you. Avoid waving them across, sounding the horn, flashing your lights or giving any signals that could mislead them and create a dangerous situation. Question. Which instrument panel warning light would show that headlights are on full beam? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is D. Explanation. You should be aware of all the warning lights and visual aids on the vehicle you're driving. If you're driving a vehicle for the first time, you should familiarize yourself with all the controls, warning lights, and visual aids before you set off. Question. What should you do when a person herding sheep asks you to stop? Give one answer. A. Continue on, but drive slowly. B. Ignore them as they have no authority. C. Stop and switch off your engine. D. Try to get past quickly. The correct answer is C. Stop and switch off your engine. 
Explanation, if someone in charge of animals asks you to stop, you should do so and switch off your engine. Animals are unpredictable and startle easily, they could turn and run into your path or into the path of another moving vehicle. Question. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Give way to buses. B. Give way to trams. C. Route for buses. D. Route for trams. The correct answer is D. Route for trams. Explanation. Take extra care when you encounter trams. Look out for road markings and signs that alert you to them. Modern trams are very quiet and you may not hear them approaching. Question. What do these zigzag white lines mean? Give one answer. A. No parking at any time. B. Parking allowed only for a short time. C. Slow down to 20 miles per hour. D. Sounding horns isn't allowed. The correct answer is A, no parking at any time. Explanation, the approach to an exit from a pedestrian crossing is marked with zigzag lines. You mustn't park on them or overtake the leading vehicle when approaching the crossing. Parking here would block the view for pedestrians and approaching traffic. Question. You're traveling along a motorway. When are you allowed to overtake on the left? Give one answer. A. When in queues and traffic to your right is moving more slowly than you are. B. When the traffic in the right-hand lane is signaling right. C. When you can see well ahead that the hard shoulder is clear. D. When you warn drivers behind by signaling left. The correct answer is A when in queues and traffic to your right is moving more slowly than you are. Explanation, never overtake on the left, unless the traffic is moving in queues and the queue on your right is moving more slowly than the one you're in. Question. What does this sign mean? Give one answer. A. Multi-exit roundabout. B. Place of historical interest. C. Risk of ice. D. Six roads converge. The correct answer is C. Risk of ice. Explanation. It will take up to ten times longer to stop when it's icy. Where there's a risk of icy conditions, you need to be aware of this, and take extra care. If you think the road may be icy, don't brake or steer harshly, as your tires could lose their grip on the road. Question. You want to put a rear-facing baby seat on the front passenger seat. What must you do if the passenger seat is protected by a frontal airbag? Give one answer. A. Ask a passenger to hold the baby. B. Deactivate the airbag. C. Put the child in an adult seat belt. D. Turn the seat to face sideways. The correct answer is B. Deactivate the airbag. Explanation. It's illegal to fit a rear-facing baby seat into a passenger seat protected by an active frontal airbag. If the airbag activates, it could cause serious injury or even death to the child. You must secure it in a different seat or deactivate the relevant airbag. Follow the manufacturer's advice when fitting a baby seat. Question. You're approaching a zebra crossing. Pedestrians are waiting to cross. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Give way to the elderly and infirm only. B. Slow down and prepare to stop. C. Use your headlights to indicate they can cross. D. Wave at them to cross the road. The correct answer is B. Slow down and prepare to stop. Explanation. 
as you approach a zebra crossing, look for pedestrians waiting to cross where you can see them, slow down and prepare to stop. Be especially careful of children and older people, who may have difficulty judging when it's safe to cross. Question. What's the meaning of this traffic sign? Give one answer. A. Bus lane ahead. B. End of two-way road. C. Give priority to vehicles coming towards you. D. You have priority over vehicles coming towards you. The correct answer is D. You have priority over vehicles coming towards you. Explanation. Don't force your way through. Show courtesy and consideration to other road users. Although you have priority, make sure oncoming traffic is going to give way before you continue. Question. What should you do if a driver pulls out of a side road in front of you, causing you to break hard? Give one answer. A. Flash your lights to show your annoyance. B. Ignore the error and stay calm. C. Overtake as soon as possible. D. Sound your horn to show your annoyance. The correct answer is B. Ignore the error and stay calm. Explanation. Be tolerant if a vehicle emerges and you have to brake quickly. Anyone can make a mistake, so don't react aggressively. Be alert where there are side roads and be especially careful where there are parked vehicles, because these can make it difficult for emerging drivers to see you. Question. What's a statutory off-road notification SORN? Give one answer. A. A notification to tell DVLA that a vehicle isn't being used on the road. B. A notification to tell DVSA that a vehicle doesn't have a current MOT. C. Information held by insurance companies to check a vehicle is insured. D. Information kept by the police about the owner of a vehicle. The correct answer is A. A notification to tell DVLA that a vehicle isn't being used on the road. Explanation. If you want to keep a vehicle untaxed and off the public road, you must make a SORN. It's an offense not to do so. Your SORN is valid until your vehicle is taxed, sold, or scrapped. Question. Where would you expect to see these markers? Give one answer. A. On a diversion sign. B. On a large goods vehicle. C. On a motorway sign. D. On a railway bridge. The correct answer is B. On a large goods vehicle. Explanation. These markers must be fitted to vehicles over 13 meters long, large goods vehicles, and rubbish skips placed in the road. They're reflective to make them easier to see in the dark. Question. What should the driver of the red car arrow do? Give one answer. A. Quickly drive behind the pedestrian in the road. B. Tell the pedestrian in the road she shouldn't have crossed. C. Wait for the pedestrian in the road to cross. D. Wave towards the pedestrians who are waiting to cross. The correct answer is C. Wait for the pedestrian in the road to cross. Explanation. Some people might take a long time to cross the road. They may be older or have a disability. Be patient and don't hurry them by showing your impatience. If pedestrians are standing at the side of the road, don't signal or wave them to cross. Other road users might not have seen your signal and this could lead the pedestrians into a hazardous situation. Question. What should you do if the left-hand pavement is closed due to street repairs? Give one answer. A. Position close to the left-hand curb. B. Speed up to get past the roadworks more quickly. C. 
use your right hand mirror more often. D. Watch out for pedestrians walking in the road. The correct answer is D. Watch out for pedestrians walking in the road. Explanation, where street repairs have closed off pavements, proceed carefully and slowly, as pedestrians might have to walk in the road. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to support this channel. Thank you for watching and good luck with your test.